Map Mavens, it's Prof G. Are you ready to plot a course for more big learning? Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn to take the latitude and longitude that we added for each place and plot them on a map. And we'll also show how to display the user's location on a map. So let's chart our course to Swiftiness. So Swifter, here's a quick look at the steps that we're going to be using to set up a map in Swift UI. We're going to import map kit. We're going to create a region, which is of type MK coordinate region. And a region defines the center as well as the scale of the map. Now we'll also set up an array of annotations or points that can be plotted on the map and pretty much any data model can be used as an annotation if it's identifiable, it has an ID property, and it has a coordinate value which is of type CL location coordinate 2D which provides access to a latitude and a longitude. Then we'll create the map, we'll iterate through those annotations, plotting each one, although we'll only be plotting one point in this lesson, and we'll use the basic map marker, although you can also roll your own map marking views by using map annotation. And we'll also learn how to show an indicator for the device's location on the map as well. Let's get going. So, Swifters, we're going to add our map in the spot detail view, so make sure you're in that file. And we'd like to add our map below our text fields, just above the spacer here, but before we can do that, we've got to import map kit. Then head down to the spot I just pointed out under the group modifiers and above the spacer and begin to type map. And now there are a few options in here and I'm going to select the one that has annotation items and annotation. Find that and press return. And if you selected one with more parameters, you can just highlight and delete those. So in here, I've got coordinate region, annotation items and annotation content. So what does this stuff mean? Well, the coordinate region defines the center and size of the map. So we'll need to create a value of type MK coordinate region to pass in here. And after we create that, we'll have to finesse it a bit because if we have a spot, then we want the map centered on that spot. But if the user's entering a new value, they haven't searched for a spot yet. So we'll just center the map on the device's location. So we'll do that part in just a bit in an on appear modifier. But first, let's declare a variable map region that'll be of type MK coordinate region. And I'm going to declare this and initialize it, even though it'll initialize to generic values, just so that I can avoid having to add a parameter to any of the statements that I've already written that call spot detail view. If I just wrote it like this, declared but not initialized, I'd have a bunch of errors in my code asking me to input the value for map region. So instead I'll say at state private var map region equals mk coordinate region, open and close parens. And I could hard code the size of the region with a literal, but I'm going to create a constant for this because I'm going to refer to this in a few places in my code. So just in case you want to go and change the default size on your map, you'll only need to update it in one place. So to do that, I'm going to say let region size equal 500.0. So this is a measurement in meters. You want the point zero in there, so this registers as a double. And I think that's a good size for showing location. And I'll show you, you can also pinch and zoom to change the map size too. Now, as I mentioned, I want to update the map region when the view appears. So I'm going to code fold VStack and I'm going to add an on appear modifier to it. And in the curlies, if I'm looking at an existing spot that's been saved, I'd be able to tell that by checking to see if spot.id does not equal exclamation point equal nil, open and close curlies, then I want to update update my map region, setting it to equal MK coordinate region, select the initializer with the center latitude meters and longitude meters, and we're going to set the center to the spot. Now I could create a coordinate value in here, but instead I'm going to create a computed property in my spot struct that'll give me a single coordinate for the latitude and longitude. So why don't we head back to the spot struct file and we want to create a variable here var, we'll name this coordinate colon and we're going to use the core location library here. So let's make sure that we import core location. And this is going to be of type CL location coordinate 2D, open and close curlies. And inside we'll create one of these coordinates with CL location coordinate 2D and select the option with the latitude and longitude and we'll pass in our latitude and longitude values. So now whenever we need a location coordinate, we can just refer to the coordinate property and we'll get what we need. So now let's head back to spot detail view and we can now set the center as spot.coordinate. That's going to center the map right on the spot. And for the latitude and longitude, we'll just pass in region size. Remember, that's the constant we just created that's 500 meters. But what happens if we don't have a spot? And that would be the case if we're entering a new value in here. 
And I'll enter a comment in the if that says, if we have a spot, center the map on the spot. And in the else clause, I'll enter a comment that says, otherwise, center the map on the device location. So in the else part of the clause down here, I'm just going to copy the setup of the map region above, paste it below. But I'm going to replace spot.coordinate with, and to get our location, we're going to refer to location manager, remember our environment object, but we haven't added it to the struct yet. So up above, we've got to say at environment object var location manager lower camel case colon location manager upper camel case. And right away to avoid any unfriendly crashes from preview provider, we're going to add a dot environment object below the spot detail view call in the preview provider and we'll pass in location manager upper camel case open and close parens. And now let's return to updating that map region in the else clause. So we'll set the center of the region to location manager dot location. Notice this is an optional value, so we need to deal with the possibility of a nil and dot coordinate. Now Swift puts the question mark for us after the location that could be nil, but we still need to deal with the fact that this might be nil, so we'll use nil coalescing for this. We'll follow this with double question mark, and if it is the case that we get a nil, we'll just say CL location coordinate 2D with open and close parens. So initializing CL location coordinate 2D without any parameters creates a location that would be at the intersection of the prime meridian and the equator. If you're curious, that's in the Atlantic Ocean, about 400 miles off the west coast of Africa. But if the users approved location services when they started, then they should never see this. Now, there is a tricky issue that we need to deal with, and it's tough to recognize because we don't have an await value in here. But if we don't wrap this resetting of the map value with our location inside of a task clause, then we might update the map region before we get our location back from the location manager. I thought I'd just re-trigger a drawing of the map. Apparently, that doesn't work. I found out the hard way. If you want, you can try running without the task as we've set it up right now, and you'll probably find your map doesn't update update, but what I'm going to do is right after this else clause starts, I'm going to say task with a capital T, open and close curlies, I'm going to write a comment in here reminding if we don't embed this in a task, then the map update likely won't show. Then I'm going to cut out the map region line that we just wrote, paste it between the curlies, and so now we're ready to update our coordinate region on our map with map region. Now it'll be either centered on a spot or if we don't have a spot, we're entering a new spot, we'll center it on the location of the device. So now I'll click to unfold the code that was folded under the VStack. And then in this call, when we initialize a map, we can enter map region as the coordinate region. And then we have annotation items in here. And this is an array of annotations that we can plot. Now for something to be plottable in an array of annotations, those individual annotations need two things. They need to be identifiable, and they also need to have a coordinate value of type CL location 2D. And if we head over and take a look at our spot struct, hey, we've got both of these. But we're going to run into a little bit of a problem. See how our ID property is an optional here? Well, if we've selected a spot because we've just done a place lookup, then we're going to have a spot, but that has not yet had its ID created. Because remember, the ID is created when we save in Cloud Firestore by Cloud Firestore. That's set up by the add document Firestore command. So what we're going to do to work around a problem where we might have selected a spot, but we haven't saved it so we don't have an ID yet, is we're going to create a special annotation struct. And that's going to have a non nil ID created automatically, and then we'll just map in our name, address, and coordinate from the spot to this new annotation struct. Now it's a few more extra steps, it's a little bit more code, but this is what we need to do given how we've set things up in Firebase. So back in our spot detail view, this struct is sort of a model, and I could separate this out in a separate model file, but since I'm only using this in this particular view here, this is the only one with a map, I think it's totally fine to put it right in here. So under the struct definition, I'll say struct annotation notation, capital A, remember we're creating a type here, colon, it has to be identifiable, open and close curlies. And then we'll add the properties, let id equals uuid open and close parens dot uuid string, var name colon string, var address colon string, and var coordinate colon c a location coordinate 2d. And now let's create a variable that's going to hold an array of this struct. So we'll say at state private var annotations, lowercase a, colon, in square brackets, capital A annotation, singular, equals empty square brackets. So we've got an empty array of annotation structs 
called annotations. And now in on appear, we also want to initialize this array of annotations. Now we only have one element in our array. That's the spot that we want to plot, but it's totally fine to add more annotations. If you had more spots that you wanted to add, we just only have one spot that we're plotting here. So we're going to say annotations equals square brackets, capital A annotation, open parens, and we'll pass in spot.name, spot.address, and spot.coordinate. So now we have a spot in a format that can be displayed on a map. And we almost had that even without this annotation struct, but maps don't deal well with a nil ID value. So back in our map setup, We'll set annotation items to annotations, plural, then tab over to annotation content, press return for trailing closure format. We'll name the element that we're passing in here through our iteration as annotation, singular. And the code down below is where we want to plot the point on a map. And SwiftUI makes this super easy. We'll just select map marker. And the option we want is the one with the coordinate. And we'll pass in annotation dot coordinate. That's all we need to do to plot stuff on a map. Now we are going to notice in just a bit, there are a few more changes we need to make. And whoops, I almost forgot. Map region is a binding value. Xcode tells me I need to add a dollar sign out in front of map region. And we do see our map in the preview provider, but let's build and run in the simulator so we can take advantage of the simulated location that we've added. Hammer time, no errors. And when I click plus, I'm actually centering on my location. So this is right in the center of Boston College where I teach. And that's what I set my simulator up to simulate as the simulated location. But it'd be nice if I also saw that blue dot or the blue circle that iOS apps usually show for the user location. That's super easy to add. Let's head back to our map code. And just after the parameter for the coordinate region, I'm going to start entering the word user and select the option show user location. And that's a bool. So I'm going to enter in a true. Make sure you add a comma at the end. Now let's build and run and let's try something different. So I'm going to click on El Pallone, which is close to campus. Now I don't see my location, but if I click and drag in the simulator, I can move my map around and ooh, I see the blue circle indicating where my location is. Very cool. And if you click on the little blue circle, a head pops up. I suppose that's supposed to be you. So you can scroll around the map and you can also simulate a pinch and zoom by holding down the option key. When you do that in the simulator and you move your cursor over the screen of the simulated iPhone, you'll see two circles that are supposed to represent fingers. Now you can move those either closer together or farther apart by moving your mouse. And then if you click while holding down the option key, this acts as if those two fingers are down so you can move the mouse to pinch in zoom. Now I found that a little bit awkward, but in a recent update to Xcode, Apple added the fact that if you double click, but keep the mouse held down after the second click, then you can scroll down or scroll up to zoom out or zoom in. Also very handy. So feel free to go back and check out other locations. They all center perfectly on that particular location. We do that in on appear when we find a spot, we update the region so that it centers on that spot's coordinates and we update the annotations so that that spot is plotted with a marker. But what happens if we click on plus now? Nice. We see the blue circle right where the device location is being simulated and with the map centered on that spot. And you see the Schiller Institute for Integrated Science and Society at Boston College, which is named after Phil Schiller, the former senior vice president of worldwide marketing at Apple, who was on stage with Steve Jobs and Tim Cook for most iPhone introductions. Phil has had my students and me out for many Apple product introductions, including the launch of the original iPhone. It was awesome. Now we have one issue to address. If I search on a location, I'll do my place by the sea in Rockport, Mass. And if I click on that, oh, we didn't update the map to reflect the change. Now what we want to do is when a spot has changed, we should update the annotations and we should recenter the map on the region that we selected. And that's pretty easy to do. So right under the map, we're going to add an on change modifier. And the value that we're watching for a change is going to be spot. And we can tab over and press return for the trailing closure. And we actually aren't going to use the new value in here. So I'll just put in an underscore. But in the curlies, we'll grab the line down here and on appear where we update the annotations. I'm going to paste that in. So remember, this is going to update the map annotation to show the current spot. That's just what we want since we've just selected a new spot. And we also want to update the map region so that it centers on that spot. And we can do that with map region dot center equals spot dot coordinate. 
and we're almost there, but Xcode says that we can't use on change on a struct that doesn't conform to equitable. So we're trying to see if our spot has changed. We simply need to conform the spot struct to equitable. This is pretty easy to do. We can just head to the file where we've defined spot right after codable. We can say comma equitable. Now, in some circumstances, you might have to create a function to say how items can be distinguished if they're equal to one another or not, but Xcode doesn't need that here. It has enough information based on the values that are passed in so that it can tell if values are equal. So we're going to head back to the spot detail view. The errors go away. Build and run. Hammer time. We're logged in. We see all of the locations. If we click on them, El Pallone still has our device location. We can swipe around. What if we click back on plus? We see the device's location centered all as we had it before. But now let's click on look up place. I'm going to look up my place by the sea. I'll click on that. And ho oh, ho, nice. We see the very romantic seaside setting on our map. You can scroll around here. I'm going to save this one. That is definitely a keeper. So Swifter, we've got some sweet map updates in here. Feel good about the direction of your skill set. And as always, continue to hack. There's more to come.